And now for something completely different. Well, okay, not completely different because we are still talking about chemistry, but it's going to be a totally different kind of chemistry than what you've ever done before. In this case, we're now talking about numbers, really big numbers. Remember that for us in chemistry, we're always dealing with very, very large numbers of very, very small things, so we need to come up with new ways of counting them. So we're going to use the mole. Now, when you hear the word mole up until this point, you've maybe thought about a little critter that, that digs holes in your garden. You may have thought about somebody who uh, has a, a, a mark on their skin uh, that can lead to problems. But for us, the mole is actually more closely related to this gentleman right here. Now, his name was not the mole. His name was Avogadro. But he came up with a number that is called the mole and is also sort of named after him in a roundabout way. Now, you already know this and you probably don't need to write it down too much, but understand that when we get to really, really large numbers, we stop using all the zeros and we start using words. And we have that with smaller numbers too. For example, dozen. If I said dozen, you know exactly what I mean. It means 12. It's a word that has been turned into a number. And then we get into millions and billions and so on. And then we can have pieces and parts of those really big numbers. So we can talk about 2.3 million or 2.4 billion or something like that. The other things that we already know is what a chemical formula means. So that chemical formula there, and we don't have the nomenclature to, to name it yet, but it has a total of 13 atoms. And if I had more of those particles uh, with exactly the same formula, I could scale it up, so to speak, and have count more atoms. But in three of those particles, I would now have a total of 39 atoms because each particle has 13. If I had a dozen of those, well, I would keep that pattern going. I would have 13 dozen. If I had a million, I'd have 13 million. And if I had three million, well, uh, if three particles meant 39 atoms, then three million particles would mean 39 million. So hopefully you start following along what's going on. And it doesn't really matter how big that number becomes, and you'll notice we're not having zeros anymore. We've got words that represent numbers. The pattern stays the same. And the mole for us is going to be a very similar idea. So we use the mole and as a counting tool for very, very large numbers. It only works for very, very small things like atoms and molecules, which is probably why you've never heard of it before. The actual number, this one here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And if you have that many things, you have a mole. If you have that many atoms, it'd be a mole of atoms. If you had that many molecules, it would be a mole of molecules. And if you were counting other things, it would be a mole of those things. The problem is, it doesn't really work for anything other than very, very small things like atoms and molecules. If you wanted to go into the, the math side of it and say, like, well, we must have a, a word for it, okay, maybe it's not bazillion or kajillion, it actually happens to be sextillion. Do we care? Eh, no, not really. Written out in full, you'd see that it's got a lot of zeros, so it makes a lot of sense to turn that great big number into a word that is now a whole lot shorter. Now, I know what you're thinking. I wonder how many peanuts I can fit in my mouth. Okay, I didn't know you were thinking that. But, if you were thinking, that that's a huge number, how do we use that? Well, let's start using it. If I had a mole of iron atoms, I would have that many moles of iron atoms. If I had a mole of water molecules, I would have that many, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So I'm just using it as a counting thing. And if I had three moles of water molecules, then I would have three times that number of atoms because each molecule of water has three atoms. Now, you might be thinking, how are you going to use that? And the good news is you don't really have to use the number 6.022 times 10 to the 23, which, by the way, is called Avogadro's number, and that was the gentleman I showed you a picture of earlier. What we do is we want to count them in terms of moles. So we need to be able to figure out how many moles we have, and then we'll just count the moles. And those groups then, it doesn't matter if they're atoms or molecules, we'll put them into our box and that box holds a mole and we'll count them as that way. Now if I asked you how many eggs there are, probably many of you would have not counted out individual eggs. You would have looked at six containers of eggs and said that each container has 12, that means six dozen. We want to do the same thing. We want to count our atoms and molecules in bigger units, and our unit is the mole. Okay, how do we do that? We start with something called the molar mass. 
And the molar mass is going to be the mole of one, sorry, the mass rather, of one mole of stuff. We could be talking about the molar mass of atom, we could be talking about the molar mass of a molecule. And we're going to be measuring it in grams. So in other words, when you have a balance that measures in grams, we can use that to count how many atoms we have. So even though atoms are extremely tiny, we can use grams to help us count atoms as long as we're grouping them in these things called moles. Okay, we need the periodic table. Now you might not have one with you. There's this one here. You can also look one up online. You probably have one somewhere. But regardless, I'll show you what you need to know. So, the typical kind of question will be asking you to come up with the molar mass of something. So if you have the molar mass of iron, you go to the periodic table, you find iron on the periodic table, and you look at the, well, the number that's the mass number. Now we've used that mass number before when it was talking about the mass of a single atom. Now we're going to be talking about the mass of 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And fortunately, the number stays the same. It's 55.845, but now it's grams, grams per mole. Each mole of iron has 55.845 grams. What about potassium? Well, you go to potassium on the periodic table and you look it up, and you find out that it has a molar mass of roughly 39.1, or 39.0983, if you want to carry along a bunch of extra decimals. That means if you had 39, give or take, grams of potassium, that would contain a mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, or 6.022 sextillion atoms. That's a lot of counting. Okay, now if you get into molecules, well, we want to do the same thing as we did before. If you have CH3OH, and again, we don't have the nomenclature, so I'll just use the, the formula, it's got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. It's got more than one hydrogen, so you'd figure out how many there are. Each atom has its molar mass, so if I have clusters of them, they will have the total molar mass. Add them all up, 32 grams per mole. What about MgSO4? Again, we probably don't have the nomenclature for that, but you'd do the same thing. We don't need the nomenclature for it. Add them all up using the numbers on the periodic table, and you get 120.3 grams per mole. Okay, now that so far should be okay, but we want to go a little bit further than that because all we've done so far is figured out how heavy that molecule is. We haven't learned how to count anything. So you're going to have a chemical formula. You'll know how to find the molar mass. And then, well, what if you had, uh, if you were trying to use it for counting, if you're counting moles? Okay, so you've got CH3OH, and we know that's got a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. What if I had two and a half moles of those? What if I had 2.5 moles of that stuff? Well, each mole has a mass of 32 grams, so 2.5 of them would have a mass of that number of moles times the molar mass, which in this case would end up being 80 grams. What about the other one we did? We already know it's molar mass, but if I had then 0.63, so not even one mole, how much would it weigh? Well, I would do the same thing. How many moles do I have times the molar mass? And I would have, in this case, 75.8 grams. Now, I want to point out something. That those two masses, total masses, are not too far off from each other. One's 75 and the other's 80, so within five grams of each other. But notice that one was 2.5 moles, and the other one was 0.63. And that's the same thing for almost anything. You can have heavy things, and you can have light things. If I gave you three puppies to carry, you could probably do that. But if I gave you three St. Bernards to carry, maybe you could, but maybe not. Okay, so let's just get this in a little package and then we can move on to something else. If you're trying to find the mass, and for us, mass is something that we can easily calculate. Mass is something we can visualize. We need the number of moles times the molar mass. And the molar mass always comes from the periodic table. Okay, and we can summarize it a little bit more or a little bit shorter in that kind of formula. Okay, sometimes I know the mass. Sometimes I put it on the balance and I figure out how heavy it is. Okay, if I know what it is, then I can do that. I can calculate numbers of moles. So if I have uh, 37 and a half grams of MgSO4, I already know its molar mass. I then divide the total mass by the number, or sorry, the mass of each mole. In other words, the total mass divided by the molar mass. So in this case, I end up doing that. 
37.5 grams divided by 120.3, and I get 0.31 moles. Notice the units for moles. I know it's not very short. I know it's, it's not a whole lot shorter than the full word mole, but please don't shorten it up anymore because once you shorten it up anymore, it doesn't make any sense. And the worldwide standard for the unit is MOL, so we'll follow it. Okay, I know it seems a little bit weird. But if you had something a little bit more familiar, uh, you could probably do that quite easily. And you would understand that we're doing exactly the same kind of math. We're just dealing with numbers that are a little, or sorry, units that are a little bit less familiar. So the concept is the same. So we're doing that. Okay, well, let's go back and, and summarize that. We won't do too many more examples because honestly, once you get used to it, you could maybe not quite do it in your head, but pretty close to it. Okay, here's an equation triangle. And we'll talk about how to use this equation triangle. You may have seen some in other courses, but that's going to be a really helpful tool. And what that will do is if we know one of the corners, either top, bottom, left, or right, actually it's not a bottom corner, it's top, left, or right. Um, if you know one of those corners, you cover it up, and the two things that are remaining will give you the formula for the other bits. But I need you to practice this stuff. So you've got the formulas, whether or not you handle the triangle, whether or not you like the triangle, or know how to use the triangle, isn't the point. You've got the formulas. So I want you to calculate uh, those answers, and then we'll, we'll deal with that in class, and then we'll get a lot more practice using numbers of moles, molar masses, and uh, masses, I guess. So we'll talk to you in class. Please make sure you've done this. If you don't have a calculator with you, please make sure you've practiced it before you get to class. It's going to be really, really important. And we'll see you then.